for the campaign one screen, scroll all the way to the bottom and you see there's another one here reaching space. Some unfortunate news, the USSR beat us again, but we still have an important flight coming up. May 5th, 1961, launch day, reaching space. The USSR successfully launched a man to space, beating US right at the finish line. With the exception of what they say is a successful flight, we know little of their journey and how space influenced their cosmonaut. Your flight is still scheduled for the 5th of May, and the objective remains the same. We need to learn how a human reacts to being in space, and if the Mercury capsule operates as designed in zero gravity, and your ability to withstand the high g-forces involved. And not gaming, this is Patrick. I will be your... hold on. Oh, wrong button. V. I'll be your capsule communicator today. Do you read? I do and do read. Okay, put us at T minus one and a half hours. T minus 90 minutes. Okay, roger that. I can read. I can read. I'm not trying to convince you. Hold on, let me just get that set up so I can be a little bit further back. Perfect. Loud and clear, Patrick. Loud and clear. Excellent. Seems like you didn't get the measles. <laughs> Let's get you to space. <laughs> Sounds like a good plan. All right, yeah, we're gonna get me to space. Oh boy. Already over here and data seems good. Weather is clear and we are still go for launch at the scheduled time. Please check the mission briefing in the mission pad. Roger that, will do. Mission briefing. Main objectives. Determine man's capabilities in a space environment and in those environments to which he will be subject, subject upon going into and returning from space. Vehicle control during insertion, behavior of space systems, evaluation of pilots' capabilities in space, in-flight monitoring, retrofire, and re-entry maneuvers, landing, and recovery. Scheduled launch time, May 5th, 1961 at 14.34.13, so 2.34 in the afternoon. 15 minute flight. Oh, okay, this is a redstone. This isn't an atlas. This is just a short suborbital hop, okay. Mission details, you will enter the cabin at T minus 90 minutes. This is accurate. The electrical systems have been set up, but you will need to follow the complete cabin inspection checklist upon ingress, followed by the abbreviated interior check, full internal power, and the final checklist before ignition. The ascent is fully automatic and your primary role will be to monitor systems and verify that systems are nominal. For the duration of the mission, you will need to do a systems check over 30 seconds. See bottom of this briefing. Cabin pressure should bleed and stabilize at 5.5 PSIA during ascent. Upon insertion and second engine cutoff, Seco, second engine cutoff. Interesting. The tower will jettison and the capsule will perform a full 180 degree turnaround. After verifying that the turnaround has successfully completed and you have visual of the launch vehicle in the window, you will need to check the periscope and report visibility, test the capsule's attitude control system, and test the retro rockets and the retro sequence system. The capsule will shortly after re-enter the atmosphere and the automatic landing system will deploy the drogue chute, the main chute, and the landing bag for a safe landing. Be prepared for manual override during any of the mission phases. And the systems check that we have to do uh, over 30 seconds while we're launching, it said. Uh, check the volts and amps of the main DC bus, battery one, two, three, standby battery one, two, and the isolated battery. So we're just making sure that none of that goes away while we're launching. Uh, we're gonna verify oxygen levels on primary and secondary oxygen tanks. This right here on the right here. Uh, we're gonna verify automatic and manual fuel levels. This right here on the left here. We're gonna monitor our G forces, our altitude, and our cabin pressure. That's right here. Uh, G forces is right here. And our altitude is right here. All right. Understood, understood. Today's flight will be a suborbital flight with splashdown in the Atlantic. USS Eisencraft are go at the recovery location. Awesome. When ready, please perform the interior inspection checklist. All right. So, checklist, interior inspection. Oh, we have to do this. All right, we're gonna hit run here. Let's get this cockpit ready. I think we have to hit run in order for it to give me the prompts here. Uh, I, I would like to do it without highlighting the things, but that's all right with me. Looks like we have to do all the same things that we just did. Roger, let's get this cockpit ready. Let's do it. So we're just gonna try to flip on everything and remember 
without looking at the top right at least, why we're doing everything we're doing right now. Oh, can, let's try to select that one. There we go. This is just all of the fuses turning off. Oh, let's not do that. Turning on our spacecraft. Now we need to set auto retro uh, to arm instead of off. Let's see, this is the retro delay, instantaneous. If that's set to normal, there's about a 30 second delay. So we wanna set that to instantaneous, I believe for uh, emergency situations. I don't exactly know what TLM low frequency actually does, um, but it's there. All right, so these are all set correctly, looks like uh, our maneuver. Oh, that's landing. Let's see, our maneuver needs to be set to on. This will spin up the gyros in uh, five minutes. Uh, I think that's at the bottom of the list, but I couldn't care. Oh, fire retro switch. Oh, I need to take that off. These are all garden and stuff like that. All right, let's just see if I can remember everything. Our chem pressure is that um, everything looks about the same here. Um, for some reason, they want this to normal and these both on standby and checking that we have voltage on everything. That's good, that's good. I don't remember if they want me to set that to normal or what. All right, we have AC voltage on standby and normal. That is good, that is good. All right, we're just gonna hit proceed on a bunch of those. All right, our fuel, our fuel is full. Accelerometer is at zero, descent zero, altitude zero, our gyros, well, this isn't our gyros, this is just our attitude indicators. Degrees are good, rate of movement is zero. That's good because again, we're on the pad. Time from launch set to zero. Our current time, which is 110, is accurate. I already removed that. So let's proceed. I think we got a lot of this stuff right. Suit fan, cabin fan, uh, request battery check. Right, 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 right. Battery check. All at 100% and it looks like we have good voltage on everything. Although our DC amps is uh, nothing. Uh, probably because we're not on internal power. We're still on external power. That's why that says nothing. So that's, that's, that's to be expected. Ah, they want this at the middle. Okay, okay, okay. Amps indicator is zero. Right, see, that's, it's even telling me that we should do that. AC, well, uh, yep, that's 115. 115 on AC volts. We're good there. Proceed. Uh, they want this in the, on the right for, why does it say middle for that? Maybe I misread it. UHF on high, transmit in the middle. And this over to ground control. And then we gotta turn on all of our indicator lights. So if something goes wrong, it, we really know about it. Verify fuses are all in one position. Done and done. Inverter temp two, oh, right. And I think that's it. Although it doesn't appear to actually have triggered anything. So let's just hit run and then clear all. There we go. We are still go for launch. You're running on external power. Use time scale to T minus 41 minutes. All right, so basically we just get to sit here uh, and look at the top left here. We need to go to T minus 41 minutes. All right. I absolutely love that there's time warp, just kind of like Gerbil Space Program in here. Definitely makes this uh, easier. Time warping ahead in this kind of game is, is very useful. We are ready to perform the abort capability test. Set the ammeter. Set the ammeter is set to normal. Make sure it's set to normal. All right. Roger that. Ammeter is set at normal. All right. So we are testing the abort capability test. We're going to arm the squib. Roger that. And set the DC selector to monitor the isolated battery. That must be the battery that's responsible for our escape jettison if we need to use that. Roger that. We will power the scopes for five seconds upon your request. During the test, verify that the amps spikes. Okay, so that would be right here. And that the abort light illuminates. That's right here. When ready, press request abort capabilities test. Okay. Let's see, request, no. There we go. All right, we got a little bit of spike there and we have a light there. All right, abort capability test complete. 
All right, set time scale to about T minus 21 minutes now. All right, understood. Time warping ahead here to 21 minutes, almost 21 minutes. Two, one, 21 minutes. Okay, we're here. Um, I wonder if it wants me to run this clear all. Huh. Well, okay, it's not doing anything. Maybe it's going to have to wait until T minus 20 minutes. Oh, there it is. There it is. Please start the abbreviated interior checklist. Use run. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Abbreviated interior check. Run. Oh, goodness. We just flew through a bunch of that. We're still go for launch. When complete, you can use time scale to T minus 10 seconds. All right, retro delay. We're setting that back to normal, looks like. Uh, fuel is still at 100%. Yes. Uh, note cabin pressure indicator. Cabin pressure is still all the way up there. Temperature is finally decreasing. That's good. Um, center temp is actually decreasing as well. Suit temperature is staying the same, it looks like, which is still extremely high. Look at that. It's, what, 100 degrees? But, I mean... It is Florida, so I guess I don't even, I don't even blame it. Our oxygen levels are full. DC selector, they want me to set that back to zero. That's our main. All right. Beacon right. I'm not sure. Okay, so we're turning that off of ground command, that beacon, which I'm not exactly sure what that does. You can time scale to about T minus 10 minutes. All right, guys. We're getting to T minus 10 minutes before the Mercury Redstone suborbital hop here. I am uh, I'm a little nervous. We are 10 minutes from launch. We need to switch to internal power. Start the switch to internal power checklist. Use run. Again, we just go into the checklist. Full internal power. Run. All right, this will prepare the cockpit for full internal power. And the external power supply will be disconnected from the capsule. All right, request Blockhouse to remove external power. So that would be here. Switch to internal power. And there we go. Our ampage did increase there. Okay. Uh, did that. Now we want to turn our isolated battery back from normal off of standby and our standby battery to off. Now these are going to be used in case of emergencies, I do believe. So we are on full internal power. Let's monitor everything here. DC amps on those are low because, of course, we're not using them. Standby are off. If we switch that on, you can see the amp goes up, and we're using our power from our standbys now. And then if we switch to this, we can see our, we're using the power from our isolated battery now. So I think for power, we're all set. Okay, the checklists say I should probably be doing final checks at T minus 5 to T minus 10. So we're going to hit run on that, even though it hasn't really told me to. Launch control, we are changing that from off to ready. Now we're changing our suit temps down here, so that'll maybe decrease our suit temperature there. All right, transmit, we are turning this on. Perform radio test on UHF. All right, radio check. We do 5 over 5 on UHF. Awesome, awesome, perfect. All right, done. Verify, time to zero button, cover is removed. It is removed. DC selector, we want this on battery number one. And then the checklist has disappeared. Uh, arm squib, left squib is armed, right here on the top. And then auto retro jettison is armed on the left there. All right, so that means we're all set pretty sure oh man all right all right so let's time warp ahead here and see if it stops us at any point up to our launch otherwise i think we're just oh oh there we go okay we are five minutes for lunch start the final check checklist well i already did that uh let's uh let's run it again and just hit clear all you know what i'm i'm not confident we have everything 
Radio test, that's covered. DC selector, okay, no, we're good. We're good. <laughs> T minus five minutes until our launch into space. We are ready to go. Oh man, oh man. Okay, while we still have time here, let's go to the briefing all the way at the bottom here. So while we are in flight, there are a few things here that we need to be checking. There we go, let's me move it, okay. So we are going to be checking our voltage on every one of these, just to make sure that we don't lose them. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I can cycle that ever so often just to make sure that they're all still running. Verify our oxygen levels to make sure that these are not decreasing at all. They're at full right now. That's where they should stay. Uh, verify our fuel levels. Uh, this is our RCS fuel, both for when the autopilot is taking control of it and when we switch to manual and fly it around, which you can do. We are more than just sitting here for the ride. Once we're in space, we can orient the craft however we like. It's very, very, very fun. All right, we're gonna be monitoring our G-forces here, our altitude down here, and our cabin pressure right there. Okay, that's everything that we're gonna be looking at during the launch. That won't actually let me uh, get rid of this. There we go, there we go. All right, so T minus three minutes. I'm gonna time warp ahead because I think it's gonna stop me at like T minus one or something, but we're gonna have, uh, it's gonna get real loud here. T minus one. T minus 60 seconds, we are go for launch. Whew. All right, all I gotta do is sit back and enjoy the hell of a ride that we're about to be on. Into space for, I think, what, five minutes or so, and then splashing down into the Atlantic Ocean. All safe and sound, all, all nice and cozy. We're gonna be just fine. I'm gonna set our suit temperature to just a little bit colder you can see here, normal to cooler. I'm gonna set it one cooler because I don't like us being at 100 degrees still. T minus 30 seconds. Get ready for ignition and good luck with your flight. Oh God. Whew. All right, guys, you ready? We've got a countdown. Ready to hit this button if this doesn't start. Vocal disconnect. The clock has started. We are away, guys. We are away. Okay, checking our batteries here. All is go. Our cabin pressure is going to be decreasing. Looking good, follow the ascent checklist until insertion. Why didn't you tell me about the ascent checklist earlier? Okay, back. Ascent. Monitor abort light. Monitor isolated battery voltage. You want me to have this on isolated? Okay. Will do. Cabin pressure will go down to 5.5. After the tower jettison, we'll do those things. Basically, we're just making sure our batteries are being powered or are powering us, I should say. Our abort light isn't going on. Temperatures are looking good. Looks like we are experiencing close to two Gs, four Gs? I can't read the numbers, honestly. Altitude is increasing. Cabin pressure holding at 5.5. Awesome. Let's cycle through these. The atmosphere has bleated away, oh boy. We're looking good. Oh, I brought our suit temperature really low now. Maybe that's not good. I'm gonna leave it. Better than 100 degrees. Fuel go, oxygen go. Uh, things are looking okay. Engine cut off.
we should be experiencing weight loss now. Oh! Cut off. Tower, Tower is gone. We set that to go. We turn this fuse off. And by go, I mean off. Roger. Whew. All right, that's tower jettisoned, and that's capsule separated. Now it's doing our automatic move over so we can get a look at our launch vehicle. We see it too. Complete the ascent checklist and verify auto retro switches off and the retro fuse is off. Roger that, we did that. Oh, there's the earth, guys. There goes the launch vehicle. The turnaround has started. When the turnaround is complete. Check if you can see the launch vehicle through the window. Roger. Oh, there it is. Switch to fly-by-wire and, and manually center the launch vehicle in the window. Then manually change the attitude so you can track it with the periscope in the magnification mode and track it for 60 seconds. Copy that. Let's do that. Fly-by-wire. There we go. Now we have control of it. And you can see we have a periscope down here. All right. So first, we're going to center it in the window. Oh, man. Look at that. Look at that. We're able to fly this thing with WASD, just like Kerbal Space Program. You can see our indicators here. This is this is, this works as a nav ball for us, pretty much. In combination with the periscope here, which they want me to center it. I'm not able to see it quite yet. Uh. Oh, there it is. We're able to track it. Manually return to retrograde attitude and then set ASES to auto. Okay. Yeah, we'll set that to auto. They wanted me to track this for a little bit. And that's really cool. You can see it the periscope. And that's Florida underneath us. Okay. Let's pitch back down. I don't entirely know where retro attitude is, unless it is. Oh, retro attitude. There we go. There we go. Okay, okay. Set this to normal. All right. Roger that. Done. Now autopilot's in control. You can see it's using our fuel here. Next, we'll test the retrograde rockets. Prepare retro sequence by running the pre-retro checklist. Okay, okay. We don't have much time here. Checklist. Oh, where's the, what's that warning? Retro warning. Um... Yep, that's to be expected, I'm pretty sure. Uh, shoot, retrograde, retrograde. Is this right? Autopilot's in control. So uh, our retro rockets are firing. I didn't have time to actually look over this checklist. Okay. I think we are good. And this is if we can't do it. Okay, okay, that's fine. That's fine. All is well. Um, Jettison retrograde. That should be happening. We should we should hear a loud thud of that jettisoning. Meanwhile, let's check our things. Why not? Looking good, oxygen good. Autopilot used more fuel than me, interesting. Uh, our altitude is up there. We're, we're in zero Gs. No, why exactly? Um. Um. Hold on, okay, okay, okay. There must be something here. If it fails, jetro, jettison retro button depress. Okay, okay, I'm not exactly sure if things are going to plan here, but I think we're going to be falling through the atmosphere, right? Oh, we no longer have that warning. That's good. All right, so can you please go to re-entry attitude? This is not right. This is not right. Why are we going sideways? Um, this is not right. 
I'm going under manual control. Okay, we got our pitch back. Oh goodness, we started entering the atmosphere sideways. But I think we're all right. I think we're all right. What is this 0.5G indicator? Um, um, I think that's supposed to be yellow. I don't actually know, but theoretically, theoretically, uh, we could check our altimeter here. We're falling. Uh, drogue shoot will deploy here. Uh, snorkel, we're de we'll deploy there. I didn't really even have time to check that the uh, periscope retracted. Uh, I'm glad that the uh, programmer actually was able to do that. I must have done something wrong. Maybe I messed up the gyroscopes. It's very possible I messed up the gyroscopes and it thought that we were facing re-entry attitude when we were just facing completely sideways. Okay, this should not be... What? What is that? What is that? Oxygen emergency? Okay, I think that's to be expected. We're entering atmosphere. We're pretty low in the atmosphere. What's our... Drogue? Drogue is not deployed. Drogue is not deploying. Wait, has Drogue deployed? Oh my god. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I should have noticed by this accelerometer, maybe. And we have our Drogue deployed. And main chute deploy. <sighs> Oh, man. That's our snorkel. That's uh, things decompressing. I'm ignoring this oxygen warning because I think that's normal. Okay, we have landing bag deployed. Hold on, it's kind of... Can we... Hold on, can... There, nope, that doesn't help at all. All right. We have a reserve. Is this a reserve air, uh, parachute? It might be. All right, our main parachute has deployed. Uh, the landing bag has deployed. Um, I, is there any checklist that we have to do for splashdown? It's not telling me at the moment. Um, shoot. Shoot, landing. Uh, let's just run that. Emergency, drogue deployed to true. Okay, we don't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, this will set to left there. Um, lock. Pull to water seal regulator. Let's do that, because we're going to be splashing down in the Atlantic here, right there. All right, what's our altitude right now? We are, we're getting, we're getting pretty close. We're about 6,000 feet and falling on a peaceful, sunny day. <laughs> that was stressful. <laughs> Um, it's possible I messed the gyros up. I'm thinking that's what happened. I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh, this is why our warning was happening, wasn't it? Because our oxygen went down. I think that that's nominal. I think that's to be expected. Suit environment is good. Cabin pressure is rising from the 5.5 it was before up to 14, 16 beyond as we get lower in the atmosphere and pressure sort of is able to equalize with Earth's atmosphere. Our descent is about 16, 17 feet per second. That's gonna be quite a hefty thud in the ocean, which is coming up here. We're at about 1500 feet. Retract scope. Oh, we have the scope. Oh, we can actually see. Here's the ocean, everyone. Uh, I feel like we should retract the scope, though. And I gotta say, uh, I don't know if I remember how. Manual, um, this thing? I did it just in time. Mission complete, and the parachute falls away. Oh, boy. All right, that was a suborbital hop in the Mercury capsule. We flew on the redstone rocket into space. I tried to do everything it told me and we made it back alive. <laughs> All right, that is going to conclude this first episode of Reentry Orbital Simulator. I think next up is the Atlas Orbital Flight. 
because why not take this thing to orbit now that we were able to survive, right? Uh, we're, we're gonna set this to red. This is because I like it better. First of all, I need to follow the checklist. This was such a fast flight when I was in the simulator. So I didn't think to look through all the checklists and actually remember what they all were. That is my fault. Second is the reason the retro pack did not jettison automatically is the fuse was set to off. Uh, it, it had me do that after the tower jettison, but I must have needed to flip it back on for uh, the retro fire. So that's why that messed up. As for our attitude not switching to re-entry, I'm pretty sure we were already starting to fall through the atmosphere and we were just too low for it to actually switch to re-entry attitude. It couldn't look at the horizon or anything to figure out where that was. But despite falling through the atmosphere sideways, we had a successful suborbital flight uh, and I'll make sure to look at the checklists more carefully when we do the Atlas orbital flight. But that's gonna be all for this episode. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and peace out.